So today we'll be taking a look at John Cena's heel turn plans, latest on Brock Lesnar, Triple H, and more. Let's start things off with this apparent John Cena heel turn. In just a matter of a few years, it'll mark 20 years since John Cena's WWE debut. One of the things we never saw during his entire WWE career was a full heel turn moment. John Cena teased it several times, had several golden opportunities to make it happen, but it never did. It was also why a majority of the WWE fans started to slowly turn on Cena during the prime of his career. Similar to Roman Reigns, fans just wanted to see what a heel John Cena would look like because they thought it would be even better than his babyface self. As we're currently seeing with Roman Reigns, a heel turn for him was the best thing to ever happen for him during his entire WWE career. So, would a heel turn back in the prime of John Cena's career be just as successful? That's what everyone wonders. According to former WWE writer Matt McCarthy, Vince McMahon and WWE had plans ready to go for John Cena's heel turn, but it was turned down by Cena because it wasn't exactly a full heel turn. Matt had this to say during an appearance on We Watch Wrestling Podcast. Vince kept trying to figure out, how do we do like a Bret Hart thing? Where he's a heel in some places, but he's a babyface in the rest of places. Cena was like, if I'm going heel, I want to go full heel. So that's what was going on behind the scenes back then. Looks like Vince McMahon and WWE wanted to make it partially happen, but not really commit to it. And according to Matt, John Cena himself said that if he was going heel, he wanted to go all the way with it, not halfway with it like they were planning. So that's why it never seemed to work out. Cena wasn't against the idea of turning heel per se, but he was more against the idea of going halfway with it and sort of being stuck in between. So that's why it seems like they just called off everything that they had planned and he just continued to be his normal self. It's not like the heel turn never happening tarnished his career. Even with being just a babyface for a majority of his career, John Cena still had a legendary and historic WWE career. And as we're all aware of, he's not done in the ring either. He's been very vocal about his desire to return and feels like he has a few big matches left in his tank. As far as John Cena's next matchup, rumors are really starting to buzz about John Cena's return at this year's SummerSlam to take on Roman Reigns. As far as SummerSlam goes for Roman Reigns, the two most talked about possibilities for his title defense is either Seth Rollins or John Cena. So SummerSlam could be a great spot for John Cena to return. This would technically be their second meeting, but this match just seemed more interesting and seems like there's more on the line than their last meeting. By SummerSlam time, Roman Reigns will have held the universal title for a full calendar year. So. You have this entire narrative of the WWE legend returning to try to take down this tyrant WWE champion. That story alone is already better than their first story together. So we'll see what WWE has in store for John Cena's return. But what are your thoughts on how he turned down the heel turn pitch? Next up is the latest news on Brock Lesnar. As usual, when it comes to everything Brock Lesnar related, Everything is on the down low and full of so much speculation. It was originally reported that Brock Lesnar was in the plans for SummerSlam a few months back, but we're hearing a different story now. Reports are now claiming that Brock Lesnar is no longer in the plans for SummerSlam. Putting an end to all the Brock Lesnar vs Bobby Lashley dream match discussions, at least for now. If that match doesn't happen at SummerSlam, WrestleMania is still an option as long as Lashley is still champion. Reports also claim that it may not be Lashley that Brock returns for to begin with. Rumor has it that Brock Lesnar could return for Roman Reigns when Roman is ready for him, but no real word on about a match with Lashley. We've seen Reigns and Lesnar a handful of times already, and even though this matchup would be interesting with the entire Paul Heyman element thrown in, it just seems like Lashley vs Lesnar should be the return match. It's just starting to get a little scary, like we may never see this Lashley vs Lesnar match actually take place. But hopefully that's not the case and it does happen sometime down the line in the near future. All of the WWE fans seem to want it. 
WWE legends like The Undertaker and more have called it free money for WWE. So hopefully they listen to all that and make it happen eventually. But if you had to decide, who would you go with for Brock Lesnar to face upon his return? Roman Reigns or Bobby Lashley? Let's get into the story on how Triple H blocked Vince McMahon's demands several times. This story comes from Aleister Black on his recent appearance on Oral Sessions. He had this to share. I remember the match that I had with Velveteen, and that was a match that put me on the map, and I remember Hunter telling me a while ago, about like a year and a half ago, we had a talk. Even a year and a half ago, I was like, what are we doing? Because it's starting, stopping. Every time I thought we were going somewhere, we didn't. Every time I saw the fans get behind me or the ratings were positive, no one pulled the trigger on it and Hunter told me that even back then, Vince McMahon was like, I want that guy. And then it was, I think the match with Johnny Gargano when I came back again, I want that guy. And Hunter kept telling him, no, I have this program with him. I want him to finish and write that out. So just another interesting story there. When it comes to NXT superstars coming to the main roster, it's hard for them to really get any real attention and the proper treatment because they're obviously not the main roster's priority from the jump. But when it came to Aleister Black, you had Triple H and Vince McMahon fighting over who gets to have him. Vince McMahon was basically demanding for Aleister Black to be called up, but Triple H had to block him several times because they were obviously in the middle of a program in NXT. Then, of course, we know the rest of the story. Aleister Black comes to the main roster. He's involved with a few lower card, mid card stories, but never really breaks through into the main event scene. Aleister Black was on the sidelines from October to May, and he revealed the conversation he had with Vince McMahon and WWE before that long break on the sidelines. He had this to say, I had a conversation with Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon that lasted about 30 to 45 minutes. It was a long talk, but it was a good talk. Again, full of praise, complimenting my ability to be honest with them whilst being respectful and just saying how much he respected my creative thought process. And he also understood that there were things during my time in the main roster that did not go the way he wanted it to go. And he said, I'm sorry for that. I apologize. Let's do it this way. I'm going to send you home for a bit. We're going to get some separation between you and Kevin Owens. And when you come back, we're off to the races. Obviously, we know that didn't go according to plan either. They did give him some time away to just hit the reset button. They put this whole new character together, but he was released before the return ever truly went down. So it's unfortunate end for his WWE career, but it's not the end of his actual career. Aleister Black will be one of the hottest names in free agency, and whoever lands him will be extremely lucky. So we'll have to see what's next for him. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.